If the music sounds exotic, maybe so does the name of the country, Macedonia. The former Yugoslav Republic has had formal candidacy status for the European Union since 2005, but its negotiations to join have not yet begun. Before it may become a member of the bloc, it must settle its quarrel with neighbor Greece. Seventeen years after becoming independent, this country of two million people is still fighting to have the name emblazoned in its constitution universally recognized. Athens won't have it because the Greeks have a region using the same name. Macedonia's Slavic people are also standing firm about what they call themselves. If we change the name, it means we're not Macedonian. It'll change our identity. It means we're nobody and nothing. I don't think people will accept it. According to a recent survey, 83% of the population would rather renounce their ambition to join the NATO alliance than give up the name. In fact, NATO member Greece has just used its veto against Macedonia's membership bid. So the name under which the country was recognized in the United Nations in 1993 remains a quandary. Former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, Firem. The foreign minister voices a national frustration. Our name is uh, Republic of Macedonia and uh, no NATO nation uh, has ever uh, put uh, an objection, let's say, when our soldiers took part in uh, the ISAF mission in Afghanistan and on their shoulders they are wearing uh, Macedonia. So why Macedonia cannot be part of NATO itself when we have uh, fulfilled all relevant criteria? Athens is also ready to veto the opening of Macedonia's EU entry negotiations. Skopje has so far resisted this pressure, feeling the name is too steep a price to pay, according to this university professor in the Macedonian capital. If the European Union or the NATO members are accepting this policy of genocide against Macedonians, you know, in that case, why to, to go in that uh, company? You know, we're speaking about the... the, 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 the Aliens of, of free democracies, about the, the systems and the, the culture of the natural laws, you know, about the individual freedoms, you know. In that case, why to go there? You know, if someone is supporting this, this kind of the policy, thanks in that case for that company. The question burns on the other side of the border too. When Macedonia ceased to be a part of Yugoslavia and became a state in its own right and one of the poorest in the Balkans, Athens imposed an embargo. A government even lost an election for daring to propose a compromise popularly judged too conciliatory. Last March, more than 10,000 people in Thessalonica, the capital of Greece's Macedonia region, gathered to protest the neighboring country's name claim. Greece should not, should not accept any name that includes the word Macedonia in uh, the name of this uh, new country. Because it's fair. It's not fair for them. And it's not fair for us to sell out our history. The Macedonia, established by Philip II in the 4th century before Christ, covered today's country 37%, modern Greece 53%, and Bulgaria 10%. Philip's son Alexander, known as the Great because he Hellenized so much of the ancient world, is presented to children in Greece today as Greek. Defenders of this line of thinking say therefore Macedonia is Greek, and they harbor suspicions that Skopje might one day seek to conquer Greek Macedonia, according to the prefect of Thessalonica. It's quite obvious they have plans to be incorporated with territory because it's shown in their books and their maps and whatever they do, they show that they're trying to get our territory. We Greeks respect other people's history, but they don't respect ours. Skopje rejects this, saying Macedonia's constitution was specifically changed to exclude any such territorial claim. But the government isn't exempt from charges of flicking oil on the fire, such as by christening the national airport Alexander the Great Airport. The chief European Parliament interlocutor in Macedonian affairs calls this outright provocation. Alexander the Great, uh, uh, Alexander Veliki, Megas Alexandros, uh, is not a part of their Slavic Macedonian history. And everybody could know that it should be a provocation toward Greece uh, to use this name for this uh, humiliated uh, airport, uh, small airport. Uh, it's a crazy choice to do so. So I think one of the first things uh, for the Macedonian government is to call it again Petrovets uh, instead of uh, Alexander Veliki. 
But Parliament is due to vote on a report in these matters soon. The EU Assembly is in favour of opening membership talks with Macedonia. The author of the report elaborates. Every country has the right to uh, choose itself its constitutional name. And we have also inside Europe uh, countries like Luxembourg, Moldova, Azerbaijan, which have the name which is the same as that of the part of a neighbor country. It's the same uh, situation as which has uh, the Republika Macedonia. But we hear from a Greek Euro MP that Athens feels it has conceded enough in accepting as alternatives Upper Macedonia or New Macedonia. They should understand that there are certain uh, limits to which one can uh, decide to go. Mm -hmm. And the limit is this, either geographical uh, term or uh, New Macedonia. But if you monopolize the term of Macedonia, then myself, I'm going to be from Macedonia. <laughs> My father was, my grandfather was, and everybody going back and back. And this brings a lot of confusion, and it leaves an open wound. He is a Macedonian journalist, however, who complains that the options for his young country are too squeezed. For the moment, this Euro-Atlantic prospect is the only imposing force keeping the country as we know it together today. I'm thinking about the ethnic Albanians and Macedonians living together. What worries me is that the politicians haven't come forward with another alternative we could think about. If it's not the European Union and NATO, what are we going to do? Macedonia is 68% Macedonian. The rest of its population is an ethnic mosaic. The largest group is the Albanians, 25%. In 2001, armed conflict erupted when Albanian separatists rebelled, demanding equal rights. Kosovo's recent declaration of independence also points to how fragile Macedonia is. The thinking at the Greek newspaper Macedonia is that Athens would be wise to support its northern neighbors Euro-Atlantic integration. Greece's Greece's interest is to have this country stable and at peace, and not to have new quarrels, new breakouts. A greater Albania or greater Bulgaria, and the eternal ethnic problems. Europe understands it cannot leave a vacuum in its heart. The EU's foreign affairs ministers at the end of March reiterated that all the countries of the Western Balkans have clear European prospects. It is also clear that Skopje cannot hope to make progress alone.